Lord Alton stands out not just in the United Kingdom, but globally for his efforts to advance the cause of freedom of religion for all people. Not to speak. His decades of tireless, uh, persistent devotion to speaking out for uh, religious freedom around the world across a lifetime uh, in, in politics uh, is really second to none. David has always spoken up, always been a voice for the voiceless. You can tell that he hates uh, oppression. He hates persecution and prejudice. And he's one of the most powerful advocates that I've ever come across. As a little boy, my mother took me back several times to the west of Ireland, and she told me the stories of the Great Famine from the 19th century when a million people had died in the famine. Sometimes my father would say things, well, how could God let things like this happen? And we would discuss how it wasn't God, but it was men who made wars of this kind. It was men who created these kinds of circumstances. And I knew that Politics was a way, perhaps, of men making a difference, of getting involved and doing something about those kinds of things and preventing them from happening. We even had some words on the wall when I was growing up in Irish that said, it's in the shelter of each other's lives that the people live. So I didn't go into politics for a political career, but I saw it as a chance to make some kind of difference. He was first elected to the House of Commons as the, the youngest member of parliament uh, in the 1970s. He, he served many years in the House of Commons, then went into the House of Lords, uh, and he's still going. Well, that was, that was uh, his election campaign slogan. Was, that was for the 92, yeah. Okay. Um, he, he never turned anybody away, and all the letters that he got, um, he always answered them. So it, was a, it wasn't, you know, sort of too far-fetched to say that everybody knows somebody who's been helped by, by David. He's been a great friend and ally of the work that we're doing. And we were so grateful just this last year when he joined an amicus brief that we filed in Argentina to hold China accountable for atrocities that are being committed against the Uyghur people. He's one of the um, first MPs who spoke very loudly about the Uyghur situation. When there was uh, a very overt persecution of Coptic Christians, he was a staunch advocate. He's traveled many times to many places where this is, is a real crisis, a real situation. And he comes back and he talks in the House of Lords with enormous knowledge and very convincingly about the need to try to protect people who are not protected by international law or any other means from suffering oppression and persecution unreached unhelped, unheard. All right, whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. You are so beautiful. Beautiful to me, my Jesus. You are so beautiful. I was in prison, just praying, have no idea what is going on. But David Walton came to my family, to Leningrad, to St. Petersburg. And he, here is with my wife, with children, talking. David Walton always fighting for me, always. And in the parliament, everywhere, visiting my family. I was so excited when I realized that he was there. One day, it's interesting, I was invited to the parliament with Danny Smith together. And we came and I see David Alton staying and I think I need to say hello, because, but I'm shying because big figure, <laughs> big guy. <laughs> then I think I will go and will say hello anyway. So I came just a little bit like that. Hello, David. So, Father, come here, make a picture, take a picture. <laughs> He's my friend. <laughs> so a big heart loving man. Thanks God f that we've got such kind of people like David Alton. I saw him speak on a TV program on North Korea and I felt, oh, who's that guy speaking on North Korea? 
So I emailed him. I didn't expect he would reply me back. But within just three minutes, he replied to me back and saying, would you like to visit my university? Well, his secretary, she was very, very nervous when I arrived at the reception. And then later, uh, uh, David came in and told me, you know what, Timothy? My secretary was so nervous because someone from North Korea waiting in the reception. That's how I met him. And this young man came in. He showed me as he wept and showed me the torture marks on, on his back where he'd been tortured in one of the North Korean prisons. He'd escaped once and caught and sent back, uh, escaped a second time, and eventually ended up in the UK and came to my university office saying, I just want to learn about politics and how I can make a difference one day in my own country. I have communicated with him almost every day since I first met him. He's been mentor, advisor, and also I am grateful to uh, refer that he is my <laughs> personal honorary father. Yeah. So um, at my wedding, I didn't have my own parents. So, and he was very kind that him and his wife kindly suggested, well, we could be your honorary parents at the wedding. I, re I really hope and see he's going to see that <laughs> free North Korea. I, I, I really hope that I can travel to North Korea with him, with him someday. <laughs> Lord Alton is very rooted in his own Christian faith, but then he uses that as a springboard to be able to protect others of all faiths and none. Without people like him, uh, many of the world's uh, tragedies would be much less better known and understood and therefore would receive much less attention, advocacy, and, and in the end, uh, hopefully action to help. We need more advocates, government officials, and experts like Lord Alton who both have the awareness, the insight to understand the threats that we're facing to freedom of religion or belief. And not only is he aware of those issues, but he has the courage and the willingness to stand forward and to boldly take positions on these issues and to try and make a difference.